You're interrupted. People are trying to take power from you in some sense. Mm -hmm. Even you're asking why you give your power away. Thank you for tuning in to Confessions to my Acupuncturist. This is Dr. Mark, an acupuncturist in Singapore. Listen on as my patient confesses to me the joy of discovering autonomy as a child and how to retain power in a meeting as a woman. So what do you do? <laughs> I did music. <laughs> you did music? In, as a minor. As a minor in university? Yeah. Because you like music? Yeah, because I like music. And I, I played last time. Right, so... You so played what? I played the piano. Yeah. So. That never came out in our conversations <laughs> at all. Yeah, never. Okay, so I asked you, uh, just now you said something about growing up. Yeah. The growing up part is what? Part and parcel growing up. So I said I didn't study as much mm. and I did a lot of extracurricular stuff. Mm. Um, how do I put it? Can you feel the ankle one? I feel it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel this one. Yeah, it, the other one's coming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is growing up? Not that I didn't know there's other things besides studies. Mm -hmm. Like, not that you don't know, but like, you, it's almost like you finally figured out that, oh man, these things are actually damn fun, besides studying. Mm. Oof. Okay, I got it. You know, and like, I was in a school where you had almost full control of your extracurricular activities, in the sense that the teachers are not going to dictate whether, you know, how the music and drama society is going to run their stuff. The teachers are there as advisors, but they don't care, like, what you do, because you're at that level where you're allowed to do anything, yeah, okay. right? Yeah. So we would put out plays that you would literally go school to school to school to school to sell tickets. Um, and these plays take, you know, a bunch of things to do. Like you would train, you rehearse, you, you could do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And it's a full night of play and you, you, you would sell, sell out tickets for like a, f a couple of weeks, yes. right? You do everything like from audio to visual to lighting to all kinds of funky stuff. Yeah. So it's like, it's almost like the first time you go into like full, full, full production. Yes, production. And you do everything like from team, having to argue, you know, all those kind of crazy stuff that normally, I guess if I was, in, when I was in the girls' school, things are very tempered down. Like the teachers would control, say, okay, you know, you do this and do that. So okay. they get a lot of autonomy in terms of like running their clubs and societies. Okay. A lot of autonomy. Okay. So was that a grow up moment? Like... That was Being definitely a grow-up moment. Production and Being part of production is one, but I think it's... Working, yeah, in groups. working in groups, getting to know people, like learning to really take charge and say, okay, I'm allowed to make decisions now. I'm not looking to somebody else to say yes or no. In any other controlled school, the teachers will say, okay, this is good, this is bad. They're going to give you the roadmap to go. Okay. Here, there's no roadmap. You decide. Oh, everything is possible. The road is wide. There's some level of empowerment, right? Yeah, for sure. Mm. Autonomy. It's like growing, why I say you're growing up? Because you you figure out you have that autonomy, right? Because as a child, you're under like your parents' guidance. And you're obedient. You're obedient. You yeah, you're asking. Correct. Obey, right? Yes. If you ask my mom, she'll say she's the most rebellious those two years. Okay. Right? But for me, it's like, it's also a time where I, I think I grew up a lot. I think autonomy is a probably the right word. Yeah, I like that. So, about how a child discovers that they have autonomy. Yeah, because not, I feel like sometimes even adults today don't realize that they actually do have autonomy. So I had a team meeting this morning, I was just having a conversation with my team. The other two team members were also women. Mm -hmm. And I said, you do have a lot of power, do you realize that? And oftentimes it's just, you don't use it. Tell me more. That one is... Right? You mm -hmm. don't use it. Like, one example that came up, it was, um, you would be presenting in a meeting, you'd be talking about certain things, and then somebody interrupts you. doesn't matter who it is, but somebody interrupts you halfway. Mm -hmm. So, what would you do? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Ooh. What's your reaction? And what would you do about that situation? Mm -hmm. Right? How would you take it forward? So obviously a lot of feelings come up, right? Oh, they say things like, I obviously don't like it, I'm interrupted. So one person said, I'll tell the person, can I finish first? And then you can talk. Mm -hmm. The other person said, uh, I'll just keep quiet. 
I see. And yet the second person is who you would be speaking to in terms of not owning your power. Because the person may do it consciously or unconsciously as well. He may be thinking, oh, you know, this girl is maybe not talking anything, I just want to interrupt her. It can be conscious or unconscious, you don't know, right? But you cannot have that bias, but will you do anything post the meeting? One person say, if I talk to the person, I'll ask, why do you interrupt me? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But I said, but have you seen that there are people who've managed to sort of wrangle that situation back and get their power back in a sense? Because when you're interrupted, people are trying to take power from you in some sense because mm -hmm. they're trying to direct that attention to themselves instead of letting you have the attention, right? So wouldn't you say, look, I know you want to say something or I know you have a good point probably you're going to tell us, but mm -hmm. let me finish and we'll come back to you, right? Or let me allow me to complete my sentence or even the slide first and then we'll hear what you say, right? But do it in a very elegant and stylish way because Sadly, like it or not, sometimes if if you bark back as a woman, you're then thought of as being petty, which is not true. Yeah. Right? You need to say those words, but also have it muted. It's very tough being a woman sometimes. It's actually very tough to negotiate. You know? It is very difficult to negotiate, yes. So you've got to tell the person that, look, you know, I'd love to hear from you. And I'm sure the room would love to hear from you as well. I'm sure you have something good to say. Can you maybe note it down? Depending on, of course, seniority, you know, where you are and all this situation. All those things have to be taken into context. But in a certain way, you want to convey the message that, hey, look, we would love to hear from you, but allow me to finish. And then I'll come back to you. Then the power comes back to you because you will go back to the person, whoever it is, and then let them speak when the turn comes. Yes, and you're passing the baton. The baton eventually. Yes. Then post that, you may want, I mean, if it happens once, maybe you can dismiss it. If it happens consistently, you may need to take the person aside and say, hey, look, you know, whatever happened in the meeting, and factually map it out, right? Factually, because you don't want to involve like feelings and stuff like that. Just factually say, whatever happened in that meeting made me feel uncomfortable. And I wish you would allow me to finish my topics or my slides or whatever in the future and keep mm -hmm. it as that and there is no need to ask why did you interrupt me again when you're asking why you give your power away this was interesting wasn't it i learned a lot what do you think do you think that this is the way to retain power in the meeting how was growing up for you did you have the same amount of autonomy like she had or did you grow up in an environment that did not nurture your autonomy